Yeah. Okay. All right. Tell me about this. Welcoming God home. I want to hear it, man. Yeah. Sounds interesting. Yeah. I think that's why I really wanted to go to it because it was like, um, not only has this professor just, he's just been a profoundly impactful in my life. And we came into my life at a point where I really needed him. I went to like, I went to Africa with, um, him and took a course and like did did some interesting stuff with him um and then uh he i've just had a relationship he runs like a csa farm and and introduced me to like uh the new agrarian movement and like uh he has like five or six head of cattle and i always buy you know a portion of a cow from him every or a portion of a a portion of a cattle because if you say cow that's the female anyways all i have to say is oh, he's, okay i don't know i don't know i don't, know. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> what portion do you get does he give you the good part they cut it down the middle <laughs> <laughs> what ends up happening is like um yeah i don't you get to kind of select with you if you have a the local butcher uh that he uses I'm able to basically go on their website and select the okay. meat that I want. But I usually just am like, do the, do the house special. Yeah. yeah. Give you like the, the variety of what's available. Yeah, and last yeah. time I asked for, I asked for all the, like the entrails and stuff like that, or not the entrails, but the organ meats. So I got literally so much liver in my feet freezer. Really? I don't Dang. know what to do with it. And same with like, other liver things. and onions man it's good i've got a cow tongue that's like three times the size of my head and like, <laughs> i don't know what to do with that i've never done cow tongue i've ate I liver before though langua tacos are like my favorite tacos i don't know why i just always get langua tacos do you have to cook it a certain way i think you just you might because i think it's it's uh stiffer meat yeah so maybe you just have to like roast it longer or something yeah um that's cool <laughs> talking about cow tongue but welcoming god home yeah uh, so the he, he was invited us out to this meeting this gathering and uh the first thing that he did was explain the sort of like iterations that uh, uh throughout christian history that have sort of like or or ways in which we've approached lenses for instance lenses in which that in which we've approached scripture and he talked about a few that i don't really remember but the one that stuck out to me was like the previous lens is this this lens of like approaching scripture through kingdom and like the coming kingdom but still sort of like this um there's a bunch of like power language involved with that sort of thing and then on top of that it's like uh it's still sort of like a, this idea of like abstracting you like like we're going to the kingdom or going you know the, the idea of heaven coming to earth or like welcoming god home is uh, is a sort of different sort of i guess way of approaching it and so he's he was reading a bunch of different passages from different books and um, some uh, another excerpt from a book that he's currently writing, which is about like homelessness and um, oh my goodness, like uh, liberation theology and the white trash and what's, like, what's all this? What's, I don't know. I don't know what this is. Oh, dude, I don't know. I don't even know what's going on. So <laughs> it's, it's, I, I haven't connected with this guy in a long time, but it was, um, it was cool. Cause there was like some younger students there and there was like some older alumni that were there and then me and my wife were there. And is uh, this from, from Moody, the Moody Bible Institute you went to or Bible college? This is actually the, the college that I ended up getting my actual bachelor's degree from so that was that's cornerstone university okay which is in grand rapids oh okay um really close to like you i'm sure you've probably heard of like well maybe you haven't calvin college I've, or 
heard of that. I guess, but I, yeah. yeah, probably just from is that from Paul Vanderclay's channel or something? I feel like he's mentioned that. Yeah. And yeah. I, I don't know why I've heard of Moody as well. Like I don't know if that's connected to Word of Faith circles or something. That sounds familiar though. You might have let my dog in real quick. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> let the let the dog in. But what was weird? Um, that was weird. Discussion. I think it glitched for a second, and all of a sudden, you just appeared. Whoa! Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of glitching up a little <laughs> there. I think. It's Sorry, uh, it could be my Wi-Fi connection too. I wonder. Uh, I wonder if there is the I get the like the slowest the slowest speed that money can buy because I don't want to buy much. Yeah. So what's the like the the uh, perspective he's giving on like the yeah. come uh, welcoming God? Like, do you have any examples of that? Like, what? Yeah. You... So, um, from what I gleaned so far, I think it has a lot to do with. Um, basically incorporating the um the concept of the actual home like uh as a place of like belonging and a place of um comfort not that not that the home can't also be uh uh, like it's not like it's always looking at it through rose-colored glasses like the home is like the, the perfect idea of um uh because i don't think we're necessarily would be wanting to get rid of like kingdom language but um but trying to incorporate some of like the language that we use in discussing what a, a home is and what makes a home and into our our um reading of of scripture so that's basically like the the new lens that uh i cannot remember the authors that he mentioned yeah uh, but the new lens that these one of them was like Virham wolf wolf or something i don't even know but yeah um i'm trying to think i am trying to conceptualize how that how that works i know really. Now that I'm saying it out loud, it doesn't even sound that profound to me. Like, I, but I was like really jazzed about after leaving this. It's like, and no, I was, it's but because I'm sitting there in a circle and honestly, I'm, we're bringing up concepts like going deeper into, um, like, at least I was bringing up all this stuff like Owen Barfield and like uh, original participation and final participation and like, kind of like the idea of rather than being like abstracted out of our current reality is if like, yeah, uh, you know, the kingdom is someplace else, but going deeper into our reality. So I'm bringing in all this language that we've been talking about in this circle, like becoming more real and like, um, yeah, yeah, I don't. And then were they we, were they connecting with it. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. They were and it was good we're reading uh john so going through the gospel of john so that should be that should be fun too yeah that's a good one that one sounds how do you feel about that one that one's crazy to me i don't ever yeah <laughs> it is crazy <laughs> i mean i can hardly get past the beginning let alone yeah. read the whole thing and so yeah i always like i, I told my friend mitch i was talking to him about it because he was getting ready to read it. And I was like, that book makes no sense to me. I was like, I feel like every time I read it, it makes less sense to me. Because I'm just like, what the heck is going on here? Like, what is what is happening? Because like, yeah, I'll pause and I'll think about it. I'm like, well, if I actually pause and think about what's written, I'm like, this, this just makes no sense. I don't know what's going on. Well, are you referring to, like, in particular, like, the story as it plays out throughout okay. the chapters? What was it? There was a not just random stuff. It's just like uh, so. It has like some of the I think the best scripture in all the Bible and some of the key scriptures as well. But then there's a there was one part because Mitch was reading through it afterwards after I mentioned that to him and he pointed out um, it's like one chapter and Peter says uh, he asked Jesus like where are you going like why can't we come with you 
And then literally like the next chapter, Jesus says like, none of you asked me where I'm going. And I'm just like, what? Peter, Peter just asked you. Were you ignoring him? Like, it's just like weird little random things like that. I'm like, what's going on? Like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Kind of strange. That is strange. That is really strange. Yeah. It's just like little, a lot of little things like that where I'm don't. And I still it's like. Wild. Jason, I, I went to Bible school and stuff, but like, I feel like I might be less literate, like biblically literate than uh than you are like i might <laughs> don't say that <laughs> <laughs> but like i don't know but like i'm uh there's i definitely and maybe i shouldn't say that because i think there's awana did you go to did you do any of that some bible verse stuff? i was like, really little yeah. yeah when i was really little but I, I don't remember too much cubbies and stuff like that oh yeah cubbies yeah. man yeah yeah that, that was awesome sparky sparky yeah yeah sparky yeah, and Cub- yeah. And then yeah. there was the games and there was like the Awana Olympics and man, I participated in that pretty hard. I know. I don't think I ever got into that. How long were you in Awana? You'd run around a circle. You'd run around a circle. I'd, oh, I remember then, that. With the with the pins or something? In the, yeah. I think I remember. Yeah, okay, I remember. Yeah. I don't even know. There was all these weird games and they all, they were all, they were very rotisserie. <laughs> That's a good way to describe them. Nice. <laughs> man. Yeah, dude. Oh man, I don't I don't even know how to really even begin talking about because we have a topic to discuss. Yeah, that's this. true. Yeah, this, what was uh, the what was the specific, particular? It seemed like it was generally kind of around the prophetic, but yeah, I don't know if there were yeah, yeah. In um the prophetic in relation to the the imagination and um and the the various ways that we could talk about that because i think that that's so vague we can go in a thousand different directions but for me um i guess i can try to explain a little bit more my my angle on uh the relation between those two ideas Um, yeah but or those two words, uh, because for me, I like I, I think I explained to you like the um, I'm not like uh, man I because I'm I'm gonna probably stumble through this in using the the limited uh, language or that that we have. I just don't know. I've, I've not talked about this enough to develop a way of talking about it. <laughs> so same here. Uh, I, don't, I don't know where we're going. But, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, for me, there was, okay, I'll, I'll explain it by giving you a story. Yeah. That is going to be the best way of doing it. But when I was at, give you to give you some context, when I was at, um, moody bible institute in spokane i think i even mentioned to you that like there was um a handful of students that wanted to sort of have like this revival this sort of like outpouring of the holy spirit on campus um and that was something that i was very intrigued by especially because i came out of a background where that was that there wasn't there you know like i came from a church where like it was it was charismatic to raise your hands during worship oh really yeah so where did you so, what background did you come out of like what denomination right? yeah so it, not to derail this any just trying to get a little more context i guess sorry are you there oh no Luke. Paused out. Okay, you there? Yeah, you still okay. there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I think Dude. it's probably, it might be my internet. It was a little stormy here earlier, but. It storms everywhere. Yeah. Sorry. Um, so, what, what, what'd you say? What, uh, where'd you come out of? Like, uh, what kind of type of? Yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a Bible church. And I think there's like this, um, 
institution above like the this bible church association called like the ifca um or something like that uh but yeah it's very um you know uh, not charismatic not charismatic right. and it's like maybe closer to baptist not running the aisles thing what's that not running the aisles no no man <laughs> okay and and so that a lot of that stuff was very foreign to me but i also you know by the time i became like a a, a teenager i was double dipping in like so many different like evangelical youth groups around me like I was, uh, like Rob, while rob bell was still there i was going to like the youth group at mars hill bible church and then uh then there was a bunch of different skate ministries that i was uh attending at the time it seemed like there was church like every single night of the week and then like i'd be going to a reform a reform church that my buddy had there was a cool youth pastor there and we'd skateboard there and i do it was just like <laughs> youth crazy. Just like hacky sacks and skateboards and and it was just a place to hang out and stuff but like i was still experiencing like a variety of different like denominations but a lot of them were not necessarily um uh like any flavor even coming close to what i would consider pentecostal or something like that or like yeah uh, apostolic or i don't even know what to say i don't even, i don't even know if i'm using the right words to categorize where and i don't even know where word of faith falls into any of this either yeah um, it's pretty i'd say it's pretty charismatic it's okay. at least very very open to that yeah sort of stuff but yeah yeah so um so back to bethel i guess so they or that's right because you i thought you had told me that they came from bethel school yeah. or something yeah. like that yeah mm -hmm. and they were so it intrigued you the the holy ghost yeah, yeah. oh my gosh yeah all the and, and it was like a new flavor of christianity that i'd never tried before and I think what was most attractive to me is like the intimacy of the relationship and communion with God. But not only that, but the interaction, like God is, you know, immediately involved and present in every single moment. <laughs> and yeah, it's like he's mediating and we are just the, like the vehicle or we are mediating basically the Holy Spirit. I mean, I'm talking to the extent of like wielding the Holy Spirit's power. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so <laughs> yeah. It, 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 but it got, it got, it, it got. Did it get weird? I, yeah, it got weird and it got. <laughs> <laughs> it always does. <laughs> yeah. And, and it got like, I didn't, I am always in, maybe uh, a person that has been deeply skeptical of like um, my own, like the, I knew that I could deceive myself at a very early age, I think, or maybe I, or maybe I just always knew that maybe that was taught to me. I don't know, but I was, you know, so I was never able to fully trust the experience. And so like, for me, I felt like I was conjuring, like I couldn't just conjure something. And that's what I, and I know that word has a lot of baggage. And, but like, to me, I felt like I was conjuring. I was, I was trying to, I was trying to take the reins of something that I didn't have the authority to take the reins of um, and control it and wield it in, in, it seemed like I had to force and I was, I was not willing to force it. I needed it to happen organically and I needed it to happen. Um, I needed it to happen within uh, the confines of like my, and even my own, I couldn't just abandon my rationality entirely. And so like, even with something like speaking in tongues, it was like, I've been in circles where 
you know, basically everybody's receiving the blessing besides me. And then it's like, why aren't you receiving the blessing, Luke? And it's a faith issue and all this stuff. And I'm telling you, I'm like, what do you, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to just start doing it? And then they're like, yeah, yeah. that's what it is. You just do it. And it's like, it's a faith. It's a, it's leaning out in faith. And I was like, believe me, I can do it. Like I could, I can, believe me, I can just do it. You want me to do it right? You know? And so it's like, and there was multiple times where I felt like I was just like using my imagination to come up with this gobbledygook. And then it's like, is that an experience of a genuine gift in, in, in a prayer language or whatever word you want to use and then there's like the but that's not i don't want to talk about tongues necessarily because that's a whole nother subject we can get to it we yeah but what i really wanted to get to was like there's specifically this this time um where and i think i mentioned this in my conversation with sherry uh where we do this thing called canvases and it was this idea of we'd basically be in a circle and, and these are like really hip people too. I mean, we're, I mean, these are like cool kids and I'm getting to be included in this too. You know what I'm saying? It's just, we're all drinking beers and, you know, having, you know, I smoking cigarettes and playing guitars and (laughs) there's, you know, there's records over there and cool (laughs) on the wall, you know, I don't know. I'm, I don't know what kind of picture I'm trying to paint, but, you know, the, yeah. I'm in a circle with some, what, what I feel like are really cool people and really authentic people. And we are um, doing this thing called canvases, which is basically it was, it was described to me. And it wasn't described to me immediately. It was like, Hey, we're doing canvases. And my buddy, who was like one of one of my best friends at the time. And we're out, we're in out of all places in the world. We're in Salem, Oregon, you know, and um he kind of uh like nudges me and um he goes, just go with it. And uh what you gotta do. Okay. And because I or like like basically like follow your intuition in this moment because I you're not going to get a description of as to what's about to occur and so like we all are like everybody's like let's do canvases and so then we're sitting in a circle everybody's like bowing their heads or just like getting into this meditative meditative state there's this girl strumming a guitar and you know um then somebody's like oh I got something and she shares this vision that she has of uh, this person who's sitting beside her, like, and talks about how, you know, she saw uh, this like Volkswagen van and it had so many different colors on it and the colors represented this and this is what, and, and, and like, because of the fact that there were so many colors on the vehicle, like it, it's obvious that the Holy Spirit's saying that, like, I think like the Holy Spirit's saying that God's going to call you into a diverse ministry field. And because there was this many colors on the van, that means it's going to be six months from now. And like, you know, this, like this straight up, like prophetic vision that is unfolding for this girl and the Holy Spirit supposedly like drawing this picture in this, in her mind. And it's, and it's for this other person that's sitting beside her. And then like, you know, it's being received and there's kind of like this, like kind of like awestruck moment in that time, but we proceed to go back into like this meditative state where we're just like, doing these canvases, uh, allowing the Holy Spirit to draw on our minds. And I didn't know that that's what we were doing right away. 
by the way. I was just like, what's going on? You know, and then, um, but I, I, I had already been in, I've seen, I had seen enough of the way that like other things had unfolded prior to this, that I'm leaving my mind open, you know? And um, then it gets to me and like, and several people had shared at this point, like their visions and it gets to me. And I just was like boldly honest. And I was like, I don't exactly know what we're doing. And so then she explained it to me. She was like, basically what, we, what we're doing is we're just opening our minds and allowing the Holy Spirit's pain on it. And I was like, okay. And she was like, just see what you get, you know? And I was like, okay. And so like, go back into this like prayer mode and, you know, or what have you, just like this entranced sort of state. And then like, they, you know, give you three or four minutes and come back to, okay, what, it, what, it, what did you get, Luke? And I, and during that three or four minutes, just imagined, I just imagined. And, uh, and I imagined the girl next to me, who was the girl that was playing the guitar. She was super cute, you know, and I, I uh, had been talking to her. She was probably the only other person there besides my good buddy who uh, I'd met. Um, Anyways, all I'd say is uh, um, I talked with her, so she was on my mind. And so then I was like, but I had this vision of her like walking up a hill and finding a large tree at the top of the hill. And she was trying to wrap her arms around the tree, but she couldn't do it. And she was trying to wrap her hands around the branches, but she couldn't do it. And she got so sad. And... I, and so she just sat there and leaned on the tree and I'm realizing that like, this is also like, probably like close to like the giving tree, like Shel Silverstein stuff. But, um, I, at the same time, I don't think I was exa exactly aware that that was influencing my consciousness at the time. Um, but I'm coming up with this or organic, but I'm very much just using my imagination. I, and I'm conscious of the fact that I'm using my imagination. I'm not, I don't feel like I'm receiving anything in that moment. I don't feel like I'm, but I am using, I am using my own creative intuition to come up with a story spontaneously. And it's really interesting. What ends up happening is, and so then I'm, I was proceeded to, I was, I was asked like, what does this mean to you, Luke? And I went into it. I was like, I don't know if this is correct, but like, I would assume like, and I kind of said it with more confidence than what I'm actually saying. I, I, at the time I was very much like, what it means is that like, you do not comprehend God. You cannot wrap your hands around him. Even the smallest things about him, like <laughs> that you think you can just grab and hold on to, you cannot grab and hold on to. And it makes you sad. But ultimately, like this tree has is so old and so ancient and like it is going to take you a lot of, like your whole life to 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 fully to fully navigate this tree, you know, and like I feel like I'm not really saying anything profound at all. But this girl is just is weeping beside me. I was going to ask if she cried. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I'm just like, I didn't know what to do, you know, because and and I was like, it's somewhat embarrassed. And I think it was obvious to the people around me. And and I was like, and and I don't really even know why, but I just felt like I had. I wasn't even, I, I felt like I had made it up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then. Um, is that what you it, do though? That, like that's, I guess that's kind of the question. Is that. I know. Yeah. And also, yeah. and also it had an effect on her and it had a profound effect on her. And she told me, she turned to me and she said, 
God just spoke through you. And so what do I do with that information? You know, so God just used me as a vessel through my imagination to have a profound effect on somebody that's sitting beside me, you know? And so this, this is how my mind begins to open up uh, to the possibilities of how the imagination is used in the prophetic. But at the same time, I have this deep underlying mistrust of whether or not this is from God or if this is from my own imagination. But then, then you start getting into what the imagination actually is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, oh, okay. No, I... You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And you start taking it seriously. And when you take the imagination seriously, you're like, uh, you really have to, yeah, take those things. They, they weigh a lot heavier, I guess. I don't know, for lack of a better word. I don't know the right way to say it. Yeah. Man, that's yeah. It's a crazy story. It's interesting too that that you, in the moment, you said it so confidently. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, yeah. But then afterwards, there were a lot of um. There was a lot of doubt in 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 regard to that, and I don't think from in, you, in from doubt, you personally or from them. From me. Yeah. 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 Let me grab yeah. that little mug real quick. Okay. Oh, it's still pouring, bro. Dang. Dang. I hope the chicken. I hope my chickens are okay. Oh, yeah. Like you got chickens? Man, I'm, I miss. I miss having chickens. Dang. Did you have some? Dude, this my first experience with them. I don't really know a whole lot. Oh, about. man. Yeah, I used um, to have. When I was listening to you and Sherry talk, I was just like, oh, man, like, that's the life I used to have. <laughs> like, yeah. I, used to have, I had a house, I had dogs, I had a garden, I had chickens, I had, I had, I had it all, man. Yeah. But and then what happened? Um, I don't know. Just little by little, it uh, started following God and he took it all from me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It was just little, <laughs> little by little, I guess. Which is things so I, weird because I feel like my story is the exact opposite. I started following God, and He gave the, all those things to me. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. It's just kind of. I sold my house. I think a year and a half ago. Maybe it's been two years now. Maybe. Man, that would be weird if it's been two full years. Uh, yeah, I don't know. So yeah, it's just a little, kind of little by little things went away to where I'm at now. Yeah. I don't know where I'm going now, but yeah, we'll see. Are you yeah, leaving? The, sorry, what? Sorry, I interrupted you. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Are you leaving for um? Are you leaving for a place? Are you India? Are you? Uh, yeah. Yeah, leaving. We're supposed to be leaving Friday. If if I, I mean, as far as I know, everything works out. I'm just waiting on my COVID test. I got tested today, so. Yeah. Yep. So I should be good. I don't feel like I have any symptoms at all. Like today, of course, I woke up with like a sore throat, and I'm like, "Oh God, I fall days." But I don't, I don't feel sick at all. So I don't know. hopefully, it's fine. Yeah, but yeah. Sorry, sorry to bounce over there. I, uh, I guess, directed back to the what were you we talking about? Yeah, the weird experiences and the, the imagination, uh, the prophetic. Yeah, which yeah. seems seems kind of related to our last conversation too, with the whole like lunar intuition uh like lunar knowledge kind of from a dark place from uh with i don't know kind of within yeah. i don't i don't know how to take all those experiences either too man because there's there's two guys i know very like pretty well um personally here that are just like it's like it's kind of creepy sometimes how it's like spot on your you're like you could be like i don't i don't think i believe in the prophetic and then it's not like they'll read read your mail it's like they'll just say something and it'll could be like kind of obscure kind of like what you had this weird vision or something yeah. but it'll just make you cry like it's just weird like like every dude you're, you're like a guy and you don't even want to cry or something that's just like man just something happens and you're like okay i guess i believe in it again but it's yeah it's weird and i i don't know but how to how to access that either sometimes it feels like it's as shallow as a fortune cookie yeah and so then it's applicable to every 
buddy. I, I guess what yeah. I felt, I guess that's where my doubt slips in is because I'm like, what yeah. I'm doing is appealing to an audience. And so I'm, I'm curating something with my imagination that may not just be for this one specific individual, but I feel like I was, I, I just spoke a generality, like, yeah, our, I see what you're saying. And I'm sorry if that, uh, like, cause I'm curious what your thoughts are on that too, because <laughs> there's also a part of me that's like, don't apologize. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah I shouldn't. But <laughs> no, I mean, like, I mean, you don't have to apologize to me. Cause I like, I'd probably, um, I don't know. Like I said, I, I, I feel like I throw stones at, uh, I think everybody does that though with the denomination they're in. They maybe see like the little things here and there. So it's like, yeah, you see the the faults with it. And like when it comes to the prophetic, um, I don't know, it, it gets really dicey really fast because, like you said, you can just start making up anything. And it's like, that's not how it works. Because I've seen yeah. a lot of, a lot of uh, people have, I mean, I've, it's kind of almost a joke now around a lot of people I'm around. I mean, not a lot of people, but we can joke about it where it's like, Oh God told me to date you or something like that. Like, you know, people like that happens all the time because people will be like, yeah, God, I had this vision and we're supposed to be together. I thought you were going to say that when you were talking about the girl, I, there's this cute girl next to me. And I just started telling <laughs> her, I, I'm imagining my hand in yours and <laughs> yeah. so we're running through these fields of flowers. <laughs> oh my gosh that would be yeah 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 so yeah i I don't know there's there's so one here's a personal story and so here's why i think it gets dicey to me is like i went to it was basically so this church was doing this they were doing a prophetic thing and they were trying to teach people to basically kind of do exactly what you're talking about i think um and to their defense they were doing it not necessarily open to public it was kind of like for their members and it wasn't like it was like a Tuesday night or something. So you kind of had to get invited. It wasn't like exclusive, but it was just like, well, we're not, you know, public sizing it. We're just trying to get our members, like if they were interested in like learning how the prophetic works, they can come and participate in this. And it was kind of the same thing. It just seemed like people were just imagining things. Um, but at the same time, like, I don't know if that's how it works. It seems like that's how it works. But where it got a little dicey is they were starting to prophesy over this kid and I was just like, man, this feels weird. And one lady was saying, like, you're gonna, God's gonna use you to like create comics and you're gonna do all these work with like comic books. And then the next second, someone else starts prophesying over and they're like, I see you in Africa holding a spear and like all this crazy stuff. And I'm like, this kid's like 10. How is he gonna receive this? Like, I mean, I kind of understand symbolism a little. So I'm like, I could maybe get that he might not necessarily be in Africa. Like, he could be, uh, I don't know like in a strange land and the spear could symbolize something, but he's probably thinking like, Oh, I'm going to go fight in some tribal. Like, like, I don't know. Like, and it, I don't know that it ever got explained to him either. I'm just like, he probably thinks he's going to have to be a missionary in Africa and like fight some, some bad guys with the spear. I don't know. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. there, that's where it feels like it gets a little dicey to me. It's like, it just, it seems. And I, yeah, I don't know. It's weird. I, I don't know. What are your thoughts on all that? It seems like too loose sometimes. I don't know, but yeah. Um, I think, uh, man, because I guess I I should almost explain um, where, what, what resolution I've somewhat come with, but even though it's, I'm still uh, like largely um, perplexed and inconclusive about like what I've already experienced in regards to the prophetic and the role of the prophetic now in my life. And, um, and I think that's, but like for me now, I feel like where I, and where I have directed whatever, where I've directed my imagination and where I could see the prophetic in, uh, in practice now would be in, um in the arts and for you know so like and i had i had these intuition or the same sort of so i write poetry so um you know and 
you could give a reading and you can have a profound impact through that po poetic reading. And, um, but it, to me, it seems like I'm operating with the same sort of imagination that I was operating in what, you know, it didn't, it didn't, I think what my problem is, is like, I feel like I'm supposed to have a shift in consciousness, a noticeable shift in consciousness, like the, yeah. and I'm supposed to have this, like, this understanding that I am being used as a, as a, as a vessel. Yeah. Um, I see what you're saying. And that I am supposed to be aware of that fact to the extent that, um, like, it should be coming out of left field and it should be so spontaneous that like, it's, it's very obvious that this is not me. This is God, you know? And now I feel like I'm moved away from that a bit, you know, because I feel like that really puts a lot of boundaries on it. But at the same time, like, I still feel like that's, that's what I'm noticing in other people because I'm noticing uh, that perhaps others who are operating in, let's just say it, the pro uh, prophetic mode are, uh, they, they're very certain of, like they, they, they don't have the self uh, confidence issues or the self yeah. um, that, that, that maybe I'm, I'm dealing with, you know, and like, I don't know if that's a self-esteem issue or a, a something like that, or a, a, a confidence issue, or like a, I'm too worried about deceiving myself, and and you know, so it's holding me back from actually operating in true faith, and you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, and that's just me confessing because it, it it still bothers me. It still messes with me. But some a mode that I can operate in is the poetic mode. And I yeah. think it kind of, and I think there might be a bridge between the prophetic and the poetic in that sense. Yeah. And, um, and I think that, that, uh, I'm, I can operate within this, within these forms, within these, like, almost like these structures, there's these limits that I've put on myself, like, like the limits of, a of, a of that a poem naturally does, or the limits of like, what a language naturally imposes. And I think that God yeah. can still move through that. And I have seen God move through that. For instance, like, you know, getting up and uh, getting up at skate church and just talking to these kids and just like truly not going in with any sort of like pre contrived, like, this is what I'm going to say tonight, but maybe we just have like this general intuition that like, this is something that I want to talk about. And then I get up there and I talk to these kids and like, I'm trying to be as honest as possible. And it's like, I just said something actually, like, I, I can't go back to it, back to it almost, but like, to give you a good example, but like, you know, like, I, it felt like God spoke through me in a way, but and there's also this weird part of me that's like, I'm sorry, I'm talking a lot. No, no. Like, no no thing. i'm no don't apologize. i like um, it but there's also like the i have a hard time saying the words god just spoke through me because mm -hmm. i feel like it places me on the same pedestal or or it places me in in the, the same places me with the same degree of authority to actually like do such a thing and i think i have a hard time believing that i'm capable of doing that or capable and and it goes back to that imposter syndrome and it goes back to me not even even uh doubting my own faith and doubting whether or not i've been sealed with the holy spirit because guess what i didn't receive all these gifts that other <laughs> all these other people did or what have you and and man all of that just feels so corny but it's here i am talking about it you know Ugh. yeah i think i know what you mean yeah and maybe you don't and no i mean i, I think so i mean i think would most people i know would say that uh 
well, first, I know a lot of people that say, like, not everybody works in the prophetic. And then yeah. even people that do work in the prophetic don't always work in it in the, in the same ways. Like, to just get random words like that. I've heard some people say that they'll work in the prophetic and they'll see things. Like, kind of like what we are talking about with the imagination or the, they'll get mm-hmm. pictures. And then other people just hear stuff. Like, they'll actually hear voices or something. And I'm like, oh, I don't know what that's like. But, uh, and I don't know how to, I don't know how they trust that stuff either, but I'm, I'm tracking right with you though. I I've always felt weird with the, um, saying, yeah, saying God said, or God says this, or God says that it just, there's something about it that just feels, uh, I don't know. It feels necessary at some points though. It feels too heavy to me, but then I'm like, well, maybe there's instances where it is necessary because people need to hear that. Like, Hey, God's actually talking to you in this moment um but i don't know how to do that other than maybe be like god could be saying this <laughs> like yeah take it or leave like, it. I'm, like, a, uh, I'm operating with at, in this like really timid or i i because i think it's like because it is it's i trying to like approach it with this epistemic humility like this like i don't know but yeah i'm this feeling or i'm getting this I'm, I'm having this thought and I think it would be important to share with you right now. And that's, yeah. here's, that's the language that I now kind of use when I feel like I'm having a thought and it's coming in and it's so strong. I can't, and it, and it's like, I have to say it like, yeah, you know, what would be to a, a buddy of mine. And there's plenty of times where I don't, you know, because I'm like, I don't trust that thought. I'm rejecting it. Like, and that yeah. could be a moment where I'm like literally rejecting something that's very important to say right then and there. Does that happen um, a lot? Uh, yeah. Sorry. Really? Dang. So yeah. what does that feel like? Like, just like. Um, like, is it hard to describe? But it's also, yeah, it's hard to describe because it's also one of those things where you're if you were to say that you could potentially like like because i'm operating both with um maybe the logical side of my brain so there's like the i could just like step out in faith and say that and like take the consequences of whatever happens and it feels like it might be important to share that but like if i do that like for instance there's plenty of times where it's like i've got something that i would like to share but I won't share that simply because I'm worried that I would ruin the relationship and the relationship is more important to me. It's like, it's like, and it, and it harkens back to this verse in my mind that like, though, you know, you could speak in tongues, you could do all these things in my name, but if you have not love, yeah, you know, so it's like this idea of just simply like, yeah, I could like tell you this, I could rebuke you or like, I could, you know, I could do, I could like give you this like prophetic word or I could, you know, I, yeah, what have you. Um, but, you know, would it be loving you to do that or would it just be pushing you away? Like how important is it? Like, I mean, you know, I get, it gets into concepts like, yeah, I'm like fishing for men and like, I don't even know. I don't even know where my mind's jumping around to tonight. You gotta, <laughs> I also did not sleep very good last night too. So. <laughs> That's okay. I'm trying to, no, I mean, I think, I, I think this is good. I, I'm trying to track. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, I am tracking. I'm just, um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's hard to. I'm not sure what to say. I guess because uh, it's all very familiar too. Because like I like I said, I grew up in Word of Faith circles, so like none of this yeah. stuff is is like born to me. I just still don't know. Uh, I don't know. It feels it feels fringe for sure. It feels like you know you got like the Orthodox and Catholicism very tight in the center, and then all the weird prophetic stuff on like the outskirts where you're. Uh, yeah 
you're almost like in the ocean it feels like sometimes just on these crazy waters and you don't know everything feels kind of a little bit uncertain and it's yeah. and I, I don't know when to step out on those things either because you just I've I mean I've tried that before where I've had like thoughts and I'm like like I feel like I should say this and it's just something weird and I'll just like be like I think God is saying this and you can just tell it falls so flat and it does not register with the p- person at all. And I'm like, man, I got to not do this again. That was, yeah. that was definitely just, I don't know where it comes from though. Cause it doesn't feel like I'm making it up because it's not like something, it's not like something I want to say. It's like, I don't want to make myself look like an idiot, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. like, but it's like, it's that weird feeling. Like I think you were talking about where you just kind of, it's like this urge and it just kind of keeps like itching at you or something on the inside. And you're like, I don't know. And, 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 well, I, how do I, how do I explain this too? Cause like, I would tying this back to the idea of this ma- imagination and maybe we can get into this a little bit deeper. Yeah. yeah. I understand is that uh, the intuitive faculties of like human cognition are, um i believe that like man what's how's i believe that they are i think that they they can be the way in which we perceive the divine like i think i think there is a uh and aquinas talks about this using really specific language that i don't necessarily have like right on the tip of my uh my tongue but um that 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 like it's like for instance like the the intuition for uh who what am i thinking of um i i just watched that conversation you had with the guys in fantasties but you got a squirrel over there (laughs) squirrel no uh, it was a, I think it was just a June bug or something. They're flying up. <laughs> Squirrel. I wish. That'd be fun. <laughs> um, but like, uh, is it Odysseus? Am I thinking of the right character? Uh, uh, yeah, I guess. Um, he's Odysseus and in the Odyssey. In the Odyssey. And or, a, or what am I thinking of? We were talking I, about Pygmalion in, the, in that group. Like the sculptor, and then we talked about. Uh, well, I'm, I'm trying to think because there's a specific moment where, and I'll just describe it in a different way. But like, let's say you're in a you're in a hall, you're and you're feasting. I'm thinking of like I'm I've got this medieval imagery in my mind, or yeah, even yeah. like some even more ancient, and you are eating food and there's music playing and there's people all around and there's joy but there's also might not be like it might not be perfect people are spilling food on the floor somebody's getting mad over there but like there's still this like overarching reality and this intuition that immediately like is immediately perceptible to the observer in that moment that like not only is hospitality uh good and not only is like community good but like this uh, not only is like coming together at the table good but this whole experience is like beautiful and like there is a virtue in this moment and so like then then you you you're almost like you're right but it happens spontaneously and it happens within an experience and it's sensory emotional experience and 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 it's not logically put together it's just intuitive it's it's available right then and there and so it's 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 a way of like i don't know if i can tie that back into what i was saying about um uh god being or like into the intuition being directly connected to uh, like the divine but i believe that that's a way in which it is because like you can have these uh i don't know man so i don't even 
tie that back into what we're talking about with imagination, but it is, it is the, it, it is it within the appearances of that moment, that sensory emotional experience. Um, it is through saying, vision. Are you kind of saying like you could paint that picture with your imagination of that, uh, that you just gave with like the hall and the feasting and all that stuff. And then from giving that through the imagination, you get the intuition that of all those virtues embedded within that. Is that what you're kind of yes. saying? Yeah. 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 So to tie that into the prophetic, are we kind of thinking you could just like, just think of something like that? And then, I don't know, that just seems very, well, it makes it seem very easy also. Very vague yeah. and very easy. Like I could just. Uh, and very yeah. like not supernatural yeah uh-huh uh -huh. it almost seems a little bit but i don't know i mean maybe maybe if it is that easy it almost it almost seems like it it can be wielded like it almost seems like a form of magic rather yes. than yeah than uh than actually listening from yeah. god in the in the moment and I know, like, I think that Bethel Church and all of them are really big on that, of being quiet and listening for God. And like you said, it's very personal and really trying to hear God in the moment. Because if it's, yeah, if it's something that simple, I feel like it, yeah, it, could, it, it falls into, I don't know the right way to say it. It's like you're using the imagination as a, like a, a weird tool instead of a, yeah, yeah. It, feel, it just feels like a, a magic trick at that point or something, yeah. Yeah. I com I completely agree with you. And I think that's why ultimately it's something that for me has been very difficult to practice because I don't think that I have these, um, you know, cause I've sat there and tried to, I've, I, man, it's, it's tough, man. It's tough. Yeah. Uh, cause I, even, I, I mean, even the brown serpent on a pole, like that seems like magic to me a little bit. Because I mean, like, if I'm being honest, like, like it seems like it was God given in the moment, but then, uh, if you're talking about imagery and like something it would have on your inner intuition or on your subconscious, like it would register on your subconscious to look at this image from the imagination, this brown serpent yeah. on a pole. Like, if you just gave that to someone, I feel like it it could be wielded as like a form of magic, like just, just uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know that it could, but yeah. And, and I'm not even, I, you know, like the, uh, what is it that they, that I heard someone say recently, it was like it, uh, the, a more powerful magic, a more, like it puts all the other magics to shame and that more powerful magic is, is, uh, is oh, I, well, you're gonna say love <laughs> <laughs> yeah there you go <laughs> yes, yeah. but what yeah what what would that more powerful magic look like and 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 is it linked to like this idea of like and what is true listening like when you when i hear you say truly like or and i don't even know if you said if you use that term but like um or at least for myself, I'm using that term, like what is truly listening to and what is truly hearing? Yeah. And from God and like, how do you operate with the confidence? Um, you know? And so for me, I, I can't, I, I like, I, like I almost have come to a, a like a resolve that I, I cannot, I get like, I don't, I don't know how to trust myself and I don't and in um or in, or from that matter like maybe I don't know how to trust God in that way you know and maybe maybe that's that that portion I didn't get that portion you know of the, the yeah. of the faith maybe that wasn't apportioned to me you know and um you know but there is this <laughs> desire for it because it seems like you know, you want to be, you want to be able to, you want to be able to just like, uh, 
you want to be able to heal people and speak into people's lives and you want to be able to um you want to be able to feel you want to encounter god in ways that like just completely you know uh, i don't even know how to explain it like ravish you or what have you uh-huh. you know yeah 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 um but uh and i know that a lot of times these things take a lot of patience like you're saying silence solitude like i mean what if you what if god didn't speak to you for 30 years and you needed to live in a cave for (laughs) years before god spoke to you wouldn't it still be worth it wouldn't it or god oh you know or for the rest of your life or for like what if you needed to wait your entire life without ever and with without ever you know like you want to see god's face and we're seeking god's face but like do we get a glimpse of it maybe we do get glimpses of it this side of the sun but it's like there's still this like longing for that reality I feel like I'm really un- unqualified to talk about all these things too. It's yeah, kinda, man. It's it kind of weird because like I like in the back of my head, which is kind of annoying. I know this should not be, it's never good for conversations when you have that. But in the back of my head, I'm like, man, I know this person and he would probably say this or like, I actually know a girl that uh, I haven't talked to her in like probably over a year, but she went out to Bethel uh, school and that's like what they train you to do there. And so I think they would say out there, like, it's just something you grow and you just practice it and practice it. And then you get more comfortable hearing God's voice and everything. Um, I don't yeah. know. And I guess I just say like, I'm, uh, I feel unqualified because I remember growing up and in church, always hearing people say that all the time. People younger than me, little kids, everybody would be like, God told me this, God told me that. And I'm like, great. God never talks to me. Like, cool. Like, that's really cool. Like, I would just always think yeah. that he never spoke to me at all. And then I don't think it was until I started reading the scriptures where I feel like I started hearing from God, which was like maybe five years ago or something. Uh, I maybe read them here and there a little bit. And so he was probably speaking to me the whole time. Actually, I know for certain he was, but I just never knew it uh, at the time or didn't know how to recognize. And even still, sometimes it's hard to recognize. And then I kind of wonder like, um, yeah i i don't know like there's one there's certain things where it's just like um but okay here's something that's kind of i'll just give a story because i don't don't know like there was a for a while i would just go out still go out to this place and i'll walk and i'll just it's like this park where they plant trees um i don't know what you call it a nursery nursery it's like government owned um but they just have trails and i'll just walk and walk and read my bible for hours but i would i used to go out there before i was even read my Bible and I'm just walking my dogs out there because I didn't have to keep them on a leash. And then for some reason, I just started saying, uh, I don't know why I just started saying I'm most blessed. And I just remember thinking like, that's just a weird way to say it. That's not how I'd normally talk like that. I'm most blessed. And I was <laughs> so, but I just started saying that almost every day. I'd just be out there and I'd just be like, man, I'm most blessed. Like, this is just a great life I'm living. Like, in a, yeah. and then, and then after coming back to God it was in one of the Psalms and it literally had those exact same words he has made me most blessed forever and I was just like what the hell that's weird like that's what I've been saying for like a year now and so it's like little things like that where I'm like I feel like that was God speaking to me um but I didn't know it or something yeah Uh, yeah and it's weird because I and I don't know and they, like I said, growing up in church is like, I don't know that other people, uh, man, I, I really don't know how people pay. That's why I feel unqualified to talk about it. Cause I feel like someone else could just be like rattling off answers. This is how you hear God's voice. Sure. This is how you hear God's voice. But I feel like, I don't know. I think even God speaking through poetry is probably a big thing. Um, yeah. And even people him speaking through art, like I think he maybe people painting and everything. It's kind of the same thing, like that inner intuition or something. It comes bubbles up out of somewhere, comes out of somewhere. Uh, and morning. to give you, man, I, yeah, I, I, uh, 
I get all these thoughts in my head, man. Yeah, let's get uh, them out. I don't know. Like, it's it's hard because I feel like I feel like some of the easiest ways to talk about it is to kind of like share stories. But I'm like, I feel like I'm just I'm not really getting anywhere on the subject right now. I'm like, I know, I, know, I feel yeah. the same way. I yeah. but I and and I'm glad we're both in the in the same spot. <laughs> and yeah. I don't I don't feel alone and and yeah. sort of stumped on this one because, um, yeah, there's a there's a lot of ways in which. I know for me, when I was in, to, I'll just share my more of my story. Like when I was in, uh, when I was out at Moody, like I wanted to encounter God in the ways that all my friend, all all the people that I had I grown to be in community with were encountering God, and I felt as if I wasn't, I wasn't, it wasn't happening, you know. Yeah. And that was when God started that's when the feather story happened. That's when my mind, I mean, God was beginning to speak to me in ways that I could recognize, but like God, I, it was in ways, it was these left hand, like left, left feet. It was, I don't know how to explain it. It, it, In it was through the Sophianic. And I said that to, to, I think you and Sherry both uh, at one point, it, it was through this, like, it was when I became still. It was when I, like, it was in my, it was in my most broken state. Yeah. And it, it was like, it was, it was very much like, like Sherry said it in a, in a conversation that I had with her. She talked about how like God was just like spoon feeding her like little morsels of food and like, yeah. you can handle a little bit more. <laughs> Yeah. And a little bit more, you know, and, and because dude, I, I mean, I got so utterly depressed, um, and ended up like, I saw multiple counselors, but it, it became so crippling and so absorbing. And, you know, I think there's a good argument to talk about how depression is this like self-absorption too you know because like all i could concern myself i can concern myself with other people yeah, all i could yeah. concern myself with just trying to make it through the next minute the next hour the next day yeah yeah uh, yeah. yeah so it i mentioned this somewhere a while back i i said like it's, it's just like this weird paradoxical place where like you're the most selfish and like you don't care about anything but somehow that makes you the most selfish because you're like i <laughs> you're like i don't care about myself but it's like it's for that fact that kind of makes you so like you said self-absorbed or something it's really a weird yeah. space yeah yeah it's like this uh, this irony um yeah as i you know it like i fell out of relationship with a bunch of people that i was in relationship with sort of just like distance myself from so many people and just collapsed you know fell in uh into a lot of like well i i ended up trying to talk to counselors but then ultimately that it got to the point where i became very um the best way to say it would be suicidal and uh but the best um, way to say it sorry the best way to say it, the the way to say it. it's the suicide. irony there right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah here yeah. we go man All <laughs> yeah. but, uh, it was uh i i got on um a variety i well i got on the me- an antidepressant medication um and proceeded to uh stay on that medication over the course of like five years and then ultimately um got off of that medication because of a variety of different like side effects and and things but like my relationship with that medication lasted a long time it stabilized me to a certain extent but then it became an alcoholic and uh (laughs) i just didn't give a shit about anything and um and you know, fell into a lot of just like what what I could describe as just like just base carnal sins, you know, and like uh, I don't know how to explain it. And then without going into detail, and then like on on top of that, it was, uh, but like 
there would be moments in there where like there would be moments of like clarity and stuff like that and like uh, ultimately it came to the resolution that I had to tackle this thing like way full on like I, the, what I was doing with the antidepressants was just like jokes and and so and not to knock antidepressants because I think they can be a really useful tool to help people stabilize but it seemed like I wasn't like I wasn't making I wasn't going to reach my goals with this uh uh, at least my own personal goals with this. And so then it was just like eating right, exercise, like get into this like stoic mode of just like, I've got to do, I had, I got to do all this, try to try to figure out the spirituality thing now. Um, and, uh, that was, I began like just reading the Psalms all the time <laughs> and, and it, Anyways, all I have to say is, uh, at some point, um, the depression didn't necessarily, it just took on new forms, struggled with anxiety, was on benzos for a while. Like did, we did that whole thing too. And, um, had a bunch of relapses and, uh, with depression and just like all of it man it was just like this long thing this long saga and that's been the saga of the last like 10 years of my life and then 12 years of my life and now it's like I'm you know then like but I've always still you know the probably the biggest thing was um uh, I moved home and I started uh I I met this professor the professor whose house I was at tonight you know and I started moved in with my parents uh you know at the age I think I was like 24 or 23 or 24 at the time and uh, moved back in after moving away and um started gardening in their backyard and like hanging out in a hammock and reading the bible and like it was just like and then writing po poems and chain smoking cigarettes and just like <laughs> you know getting off of antidepressants slowly and and just like this slow thing happened and yeah now uh you know and more stuff unfolded and life's gotten a, a whole you know i'm now <laughs> you know, i met my wife and you know uh, now i got a son and, and like uh, i can't even explain how the blessings have just continued to unravel and I can't even begin to count them because there's so many that I'm, I just miss every single time. I, <laughs> I, uh, I try to list them, you know, yeah. and I mean, I, but like that, there's still a lot, there's still a lot that I'm like just working through and, yeah. uh, I, um, uh, like I still talk with, a. Uh, uh, I had a therapist, he ended up losing his job. Um, so I don't have him anymore to talk to, but I've talked with him for about two years and, and, you know, that has always been a thing. Always. I've just had a counselor, a therapist for the last 10 or 12 years that I've been able to have like, you know, that third party sort of insight but also friends you know friends are I don't even know how to make friends in my 30s but like what's cool is like there's stuff like there's stuff like this yeah 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 this is this, this is how I know to do it I don't I don't know I don't know how else to either once you're out of college it's like it's yeah pretty sl slim I guess well I guess at church I don't know I've actually yeah. probably yeah maybe like different church groups here and there I don't know um so when did you go to the Moody Bible College then? Was that while you, like before you were struggling with depression or? Yeah, man, I was a, I was like a freight train of confidence when I left high school. Um, and I moved out to Washington state okay. and I had a freight rollicking train. freshman year at Moody Bible Institute. It was like, I remembered 
just making just so many friends and just it was constantly like hanging out with people and and uh yeah I don't know I was a social butterfly and then whatever <laughs> occurred just like just crippled me and sent me in the exact opposite direction and you don't even know what it was necessarily I can't even put a finger on it you know like yeah. I, I've gone so far as to be like oh it must have been all that spice I smoked in high school you know or whatever yeah. that that it you know I don't it could have it could have been like all that but you know I did have uh, I've had a long standing relationship with, um, cannabis that's ebbed and flowed my whole life. And, you know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so well, like, like you were that long standing relationship. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, from an early age and then like gone through so many seasons with it, you know, and, and it, honestly, I'll be honest. I think it, it wasn't that long ago that, um, it just, it, it became time to set it down again. And, and it's been several, several, like, I shouldn't even say several, honestly, it's yeah, probably close to it now, getting, approaching several months on just trying to clear my head out a little bit better. <laughs> and yeah. I felt like I, there was some incongruity there some, some ways. Cause honestly, my wife and I, we have not, a, we've not attended a church in a long time. We tried to do the house church thing for a while. And that just a lot, some, a lot of that stuff got a little weird too. <laughs> <laughs> it was all small and uh, yeah, yeah. And also it's my, more personal though, which is yeah. nice, but yeah. 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 And then I started going to skate church a couple of years ago. And that's been like my mainstay, my little, my that's little cool. church. So that's cool, man. So when you started, you said like, um, kind of coming back around when you were like the feather thing and you're hearing God speak to you, you said you didn't really recognize that till you kind of hit rock bottom or something or yeah yeah and like my com like my conception of like the way that god would or could yeah interact with me or the way in which i could encounter god like i don't it's almost like my previous idea with god of god with god <laughs> I mean, whatever how it doesn't matter but it had to die it had to die yeah yeah and and then I had to basically reimagine a whole new way in which God did and does uh, reveal himself. Yeah. And not only the world, but to me personally. And, and, and uh, you know, I think that also that, that borrows from this previous conception to some degree but also looks uh, a lot different um yeah you know because i didn't notice the subtlety i didn't notice ah, i didn't notice good. i didn't my my eyes weren't open yeah yeah no, I, just, I know what you mean yeah yeah and yeah. so um and I, my eyes still aren't very i mean what they're probably still squinting dude like, <laughs> yeah I'm, still, I'm just like what? i know what you mean yeah yeah. You know? and and it's just like um yeah but that yeah god definitely um like i remember meeting with uh it was really unsatisfactory to for me to hear uh at the time that i was extreme and during some of my lowest moments i remember meeting with the pastor and kind of like talking about to him about some of this stuff like god doesn't reveal himself to me and you know just like for all this angst and frustration but i just previously told him how like i missed the bus stop i missed the bus stop that i was supposed to get off on to meet this pastor at a coffee shop on the north side of spokane and i I pulled on the like bus thing and I was like, and then the bus driver 
like pulled off to the side of the street because I was like, I was in pan, I was in a panic. I was like, I missed the bus stop. Like, I don't even know how far back I'm gonna have to walk. Like, I'm frustrated. Like, yeah, yeah. I remember I pulled on the bus thing and like I was like, she's probably not even gonna stop for me. And then like she did, she pulled off to the side of the road immediately. And I walked off the bus and she pulls away and I turn around and I'm standing in front of the coffee shop that I'm supposed to meet the guy at. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And I explained that to him. And I was talking about how like, God doesn't show up. God doesn't meet me where I'm at, you know, whatever. And he's He's probably probably sitting there thinking. God doesn't reveal himself to me. And he just like, he he said it, He, he said it straight up. He was just like, like why did the bus driver pull off to the side of the road like i don't even you know and he was explaining to me how like that like how do you interpret reality dude like (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. how narrow-minded are you like yeah well you have to it's weird because you have to be looking like you like you have to if you're not looking you're just caught up in that frustration like I have a very, very, that's why I was kind of smiling because I have a very similar experience. Like one of my really good friends here, um, his name is Brandon and I would have never met him. Uh, it was the same story. Like I went to go get tires on my car and need new tires on my car. And so I go to this place because they advertise like Memorial Day sale and I get there and it's closed. And I'm like so mad because I'm like, you're advertising a sale. You have signs up in the yard. Like, why are you closed? What the heck is going on? So I have to go to this other place and I'm like frustrated that I'm even there. And then I'm like, I'll walk over to the Starbucks. So I walk over there and sit down. And then him and his wife just start randomly talking to me. And like we ended up like uh ended up like actually praying for this girl and uh like God ended up uh, she had um something wrong with her foot. I can't remember. And and we prayed for her for like I don't know how long over and over and the pain kept getting less and then we one of those deals and then we like eventually her husband ended up praying for her again and then she was like she she was a dancer and so she couldn't dance and then she ended up like jumping on her toes and stuff this is a whole big thing and I'm like I'm like okay there's there's God and all that like and I could have just been caught up in this frustration and like yeah kicked off but I'm like okay that's why this place was closed or whatever and yeah yeah, like you said, that's sure. kind of how you interpret reality. It's like, yeah. yeah, yeah, but and it does seem like it might be slightly different than just like, because there's synchronicities that I can read into, like mm. or coincidences. Maybe that's a better way. Synchronicities, coincidences. I don't know. Yeah. What, you yeah, know. I don't. I don't know what to call me there. I've I've experienced a lot of those. Not not a crazy amount, but yeah. Yeah. But I don't, you know, like, I don't want to just, I, I guess my, there's some people that immediately jump on it and they're like, that's God, that's God, that's God, that's God. Like all these, that's always God, what you know? Is, yeah. But then the, I'm the other, I'm on, I feel like I'm on the other side of the spectrum where I'm like, is, was that God? You know, like, is that God? It, yeah. I don't know. I can't, yeah. I, I don't know. And I'm scared to call that because i feel like i'm still holding out for like that you know (laughs) because yeah like (laughs) you know i'm waiting for jesus to reveal himself to me so i can put my fingers in in the nail holes you know you know what i'm saying like yeah 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 yeah, yeah. that's a good that's a good reference to bring up i think good bring kind of tying in the solar and lunar knowledge sort of thing like it's very very solar like i gotta touch it gotta yeah. all my senses everything all under the right. sun uh, yeah everything in, yeah. yeah yeah man yeah i you can't just believe that. yeah there's that- like that that weird that weird um god what's that it's that weird verse it's in the same passage you put earlier it says love a uh, love never fails but it says like it love believes all things hopes all things endures all things or something like that and that's always been weird to me i'm like love believes all things and it hopes all things but that's yeah, yeah but that seems more like yeah i mean that's not solar to me i'm like how do you yeah like yeah, what, what's hoped for i think it even says that somewhere in scripture like you don't hope for what you can see like if you can see it you're not hoping for it like yeah. hope is kind of always like kind of a, a little bit of a blindness to it or something you know yeah that's that's the way that i've um 
I don't think I always understood hope in that way. But then when I, I mean, faith kind of it goes hand in hand with that same, same idea. Like, yeah, I can't be, if I have, if I have certainty, I feel like I'm, I don't have faith, you know? Yeah. And so like th- there's kind of this, like, I, there's even a book out there. I think it's called the sin of certainty. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. <laughs> Which, yeah. Yeah. Uh, That's I have no idea if it's good, but I saw the title once and I was like, I like that title. But, yeah i do too yeah it is man it's weird i yeah it's it's hard i think it's it's hard like how, this is kind of coming back i guess full circle like it, just getting into the prophetic thing it's hard taking that leap without certainty when you're speaking man i, I guess if you feel like you're influencing someone else's path i per se yeah uh, it's one thing when I feel like I'll just look like an idiot because I'm like, I can get past that. I think I can just, I can, I can check myself and be like, okay, this is a fear of man thing. Like I can get over that. But if I'm like, feel like I'm going to tell somebody something that's going to impact their life. Uh, and if it's something vague where they can interpret it, how it needs to be interpreted then that's a little different. But if it's like yeah. something very direct, I'm like, I don't, I always struggle with the confidence to, yeah they do but i don't i don't know that i i've really run into that very often though actually of people in the prophetic saying very like, very concrete things maybe yeah i don't know dude yeah yeah no they don't they yeah and that's the thing is uh and i guess maybe yeah if they i mean if they do it usually seems like it's some weird it's concrete but like it's me or maybe it just seems it seems concrete because i'm i'm interpreting it wrong or something like 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 the kid with the spear in africa or something it's like yeah. I, I could take that to mean he's supposed to be a missionary in africa but it's like it could be or, some weird weird form of symbolism that's yeah means something and completely like, different that's where the imagination helps us as well too is because you 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 might be you're operating through this this uh yeah the, you're operating with the symbol contrary to like the and and you're operating with it in 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 and i think that lunar lunar light like you're saying versus the solar light isn't looking for um the literal meaning it's looking for the symbolic meaning yeah, you know? yeah. and so or, or under that light, you can see the symbolic meaning where in the sunlight, all you can see is the literal meaning. And uh-huh. so, yeah. Um, yeah. If that makes sense. And um, no, that makes in, sense uh, to me. Yeah. And it, I think it makes sense going, man, it just makes sense. It's starting to make sense more and more with reality because it just kind of seems like everything's symbolic when you get into the whole thing about everything originally everything concrete first began kind of in the imagination because it first was a thought in god and so it's like it was a thought first in the mind of god i guess in a way and so it's it goes back to symbolic to begin with almost in a way in a way i I don't know if symbolic is even the right word i feel like i don't know maybe it is i mean yeah oh it's so weird dude i don't even understand like uh, like yeah you read genesis and then you read john and then you read revelation and uh, holy moly like yeah (laughs) yeah yeah it's yeah like how am i even supposed to understand you know (laughs) you know what was interesting uh talking tonight with the with this guy um afterwards he was talking to me about the the light coming into the darkness and basically taking over and he told me that there's a passage in revelations that talks about that light the same light the same language that's used in in um john no john. okay am i thinking of the right i think i think so I there's, there's a part i think in john where it says that then there's another part where like 
the, the light that shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it. Where is that? Is that yeah. in John? Maybe that is in John. Yeah, that is right. in John. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's in Revelation also? I mean, I guess that wouldn't surprise he me. He says that, it, well, the, the passage that he was trying to, or that he referenced in Revelation that I had never heard of, and he brought it up. He was like talking about how the sun, moon, and stars are no longer relevant. Yeah, yeah, at the end, right? Yeah, at the end. Yeah, because the, the lamb is, is, is the city's light or something like that. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, See, you're you've got this literacy thing going on that I'm. It's, it's impressive to me. I love it. You've just been you've been reading, and you've been reading at a at. Sometimes I I'm depending way too much on my, Awana, on my Awana years. And I don't remember anything from Awana, man. I, I think the reason I've been reading is that I literally feel like I'm, years and years behind. Like you mentioned, like feeling like you're squinting like i feel like i spent my entire life until the past like four or five years just blind yeah. and i don't remember any scripture from really growing up and so i feel like i'm just playing catch up all yeah. the time and then it's even and then i'm trying to read the bible to catch up and then it's like you read it and it just never ends it's just like this, this <laughs> endless well of like yeah. okay yeah so I don't know. And then a lot of it too, it, it is weird. Like there's, um, I've noticed um, it's never up here either. It's, it's really strange. Like I'll read and then it, it'll like some, if I can reference things, it all, it feels like a gift. Cause there'll be so many times where like, I'll try to think of a scripture and it just won't be there. But then in the midst of a conversation, it's like, Oh, it's just like clicks. And I'm like, I don't know what the hell that's about either. Like, that's probably uh, yeah. something weird as well. No. Yeah, yeah. I, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean it off on that. But yeah. So in. No, I guess what I'm trying to say with that revelation thing is I wondered what, how, what consequence that would have to our conversation about lunar so, light, and solar light and all that. But yeah. I couldn't even begin to dive into that probably yeah it's weird it's really it gets it gets fun when you're thinking about it in terms of like when you think of it in like, like subconscious versus conscious thought and everything so it just gets there's a verse in isaiah to where it says something like in the light of the moon will be as the light of the sun as the light of seven days or something like that and i'm like what the heck does that mean i'm thinking <laughs> that i mentioned a luke uh luke uh, thompson left a comment um on our our video that we did and I, it was like shortly, I think it was shortly after I listened, listen, I mean, after we had that conversation, I, I was listening to something else and Sky referenced a verse in, uh, yeah, it was in Revelation. And he said uh, that verse that says, behold, I make all things new. And then he referenced the one in Ecclesiastes where it says there's nothing new under the sun. And I was like, that's just interesting if you think of it in terms of like conscious thought, though, that there technically is nothing new under the sun. As yeah. soon as it hits your conscious thought, it's like you've pinned it down, sort of. I don't know. Oh, God. Somebody's um, unloading gunshots outside. Gunshots? I, there were gunshots out here earlier. Where's Ember? Get Ember. She's in the bag. I was like... You're right. I like shooting at... 16 gunshots. Are they shooting at the tornado? <laughs> I don't know. The tornado. 16 it's... gunshots. Do you live out like in the country or what? No, we live oh. in the inner city. Well, that's weird. Oh, so, so yeah. No, not, well, not good gunshots. Oh, no. I don't know. That'd be really good. But... <laughs> it's it. To talk about how I've become pretty um, immune, but also skittish. I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah. we live in probably the lowest uh income neighborhood in uh our area um which is i love it i mean it is it is awesome it, i've got um incredible neighbors and stuff but the there's a, a pretty significant amount of crime in our area Dang. so like you, you know we moved in and you know the first week we hear gunshots and you know and then there was a two years ago i think it was or when the, that first summer after covid had hit 
that there was just that crime, just the wave of inflation of crime and yeah. specifically gun violence. I mean, I, it was wild. It was like with it almost every single night and Whoa. almost in like multiple on um, multiple, like on the weekends. And it was just like, in within like a quarter mile to a half mile from our house, like that's crazy. Yeah. So. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And being, I mean, that doesn't even begin. I, I thought I, I've had to duck, like, uh, on a Sunday morning in my backyard, my neighbor's house. There, a lot of drive-bys. Um, Whoa. The neighbors had recently moved, but their their house was shot up and. Yeah, and you, and you love it there. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> how how do you how is it that you have chickens if you're inner city, just no restrictions oh, or something? I have a chicken permit. Oh, well, that's interesting. Um, yeah, I applied for it a couple of years ago, and um, I never ended up putting the, installing the chicken coop. I had to like submit dimensions and all sorts of things, and they weird dang square footage but luckily i've got a double lot here so like yeah i can have up to six chickens on this property up to six chickens dang man i yeah. had like i don't know how many i had at one point it's a lot more than that <laughs> did you did you have did you a lot of chickens for a while meat and eggs no i never really i never killed them myself um yeah. i mean i did have to kill some but i never like killed them to eat them or anything I killed uh, two roosters at one point, which I had to, I feel, feel kind of bad about now, but they were killing my hens. Yeah. And so I was like, you guys are done. But, you know, I, yeah, I feel, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I had a lot because I was hatching them for a while. And then you just end up with so many freaking roosters, though, because you can't, you know, like half of them are roosters. And you're like, what do I do with these things? So yeah. I, I lived um, you eat them. about three, three miles from the Amish. So I just took them down there, gave them to them, and I'm sure they ate them up. But yeah, they're good eggs, though. Good eggs. Yeah, that's what I'm. I'm excited about it, man. You can look at like a commercially produced egg, and yeah. you can like hold it up to a cage free egg, and a free range egg, and then a pasture ranged egg. Yeah, and it's like oh my gosh. <laughs> did like you just that. get chickens, or how long have you had? Yeah, we did. So this year. Like I said, I applied for it, but like it, we were just so busy and kind of just establishing the garden that we have here um, and remodeling our house. Uh, so it was just so busy. And then um, the chickens were like the last thing on the list. In fact, uh, they I applied for the permit, but then it just sat there and uh I renewed it and come to find out it was like $10 to renew it or whatever. And my buddy had a chicken, like a, a coop that he wasn't using. And he was like, let me drop that off. And I was like, okay. So I like modified it so I could like attach it to our uh, garage, which is kind of like an outbuilding on the backside of the property and put on a big old run and like it's all caged in but i can like let them out and stuff um and then yeah man it but we raised them from little chicks and so do was, you have do you have eggs yet or you haven't had the eggs no, no oh eggs. okay so you're still looking forward to that thing. oh nice. yeah dude, i'm yeah it'll probably i imagine it might be like even three four who knows maybe even like five months before we get eggs how old are they I couldn't tell you right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can't. I can't remember how long it takes anyway. But I what kind did you get? Do you know what kind of chickens you are? Yeah, I got uh, two black astro or no, three black astrolorps and okay. then three buff orpingtons. Okay, cool. Well, I don't, I don't know. know much about them. I've heard of those, but I don't remember how much they like. I remember the what is it? RDR. Uh no, R I R I guess. Rhode Island Reds, I think they're supposed to lay the most, I think. But okay. You know. I, I had all different kinds too. Cause there was a lady, like, so I lived three miles from the Amish, and then right next to them was a lady that actually has a hatchery and ships chickens out all over the, the like the country. And so she'd have like she's got all sorts of birds too, not just 
chickens, but then she'd have all the weird ones. So I'd go down there and buy like the weird ones that are bald, except for like feathers just on top of their heads and everything. And they'd like, there was one I had that maybe laid one egg a week, but it would lay like almost black colored and it was really cool. But then it's like, it's kind of pointless because you're like, they then eventually it got to the point. I'm like, you know, I just want eggs. I'm just going to get the Rhode Island Reds and say, forget all the other ones. Yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure that they make, what is it? Therapy chickens. Oh, the little, the friends. little silkies or something, the little fuzzy ball. Yeah, the yeah, little yeah, yeah, silkies. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. I bet, Let yeah. them inside, sit on the couch, and watch TV with you. <laughs> That's great. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but so, how do we tie this yeah. back in now? <laughs> yeah, exactly. We got to figure out. Well, I, I don't even know that we got anywhere. Really, we just kind of like. A, I feel I still feel just as as I guess confused on how the prophetic works. I guess I'm not like super confused. It's just yeah, I don't necessarily feel confident. No, and mm-hmm. it's one of those things where I'm not sure we can always approach it with language in yeah, like I, can you talk about it, you know? Yeah. Like you know, like I don't it's hard uh it escapes me and like i the only way that i know how to talk about it is kind of like through poetry and it's and it is something that i'm like i it, it i'm itching at it because like even this very idea um of like being able to speak to somebody in a way like you know how like the phenomenon of like how like the reader or interpreter of a piece of art, like um, it, it could be a painting. It doesn't have to be a poem. Um, but like they they are actually the person that um, uh, gives value to that art, or like their interpretation of that art is is more valuable than even like what what the artist has laid out on the on the the canvas or on the page and so like there there's even you know a way in which the uh, the reader of a poem might pull something out of the poem that like maybe was hidden within the intuition you know what i'm saying yeah. like uh-huh. you've, you you wrote that thing down and you yeah. might have thought it was a decent poem but like somebody's pulling something out that's even even beyond what you in, intended to put there yeah and so um there's ways in which i see that as being related to the prophetic and i don't know how to use that language i don't i don't know how to talk about that and yeah it's the idea of inner subjectivity where like you are you're you're approaching not only are you experiencing like a profoundly intimate intimate and profound intimacy with someone who's not even necessarily there because you're you know you're um yeah experiencing their their subject um i don't even know i, I don't even know how to explain it it's yeah. it's it's hard and i'm probably getting getting too tired to get there but it's 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 like you're allowing that you're allowing that um you're uh, well sherry said it you're allowing the other to unfold uh and and become and you're not necessarily trying to control yeah but you're providing them with uh you know your own feedback as well so yeah yeah, it's hard. I feel like the language is probably hard to get it to because it's just the prophetic just seems to vary in so many different ways. Like I think, what it's yeah, like, it's for exhortation, edification, and comfort. I think we're three things that it lists, and that's weird part in Corinthians. But then you also have like the prophetic where people will tell the future, uh, or yeah. can tell the past. It's like, um, 
I don't know. But and then there's like, I guess what what you're getting at as well is like it's this uh yeah, I don't I, I yeah, I don't even know the right language for it. It's like it's still it it speaks beyond what you even intended for it or something, what you're your words intended yeah. for it. yeah I don't well know, it yeah. just reminds me of that situation of uh coming up with this story or god gifting me that story to give to that girl yeah that yeah, yeah. had some profound impact on her that i couldn't even comprehend and it was yeah, kind of, yeah. what yeah i i didn't that wasn't special but obviously yeah. it was special, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. I, yeah. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So you could say it's something as simple as like rock and like, for some reason, like the person in that moment just needed to hear that one or needed that one symbol or something. Or, or like, yeah. 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 Huh. I love that. That one symbol that, yeah, that was good. Um, well, good. I'm glad I said something, something good during this conversation, man. <laughs> I feel like I've been extremely unhelpful. Well, I don't uh, know, but it's been fun though. I've had a blast anyway. So, no, I I have had to. And what you provide, if nothing else, is a listening ear. You know, because these are all thoughts that I have in the isolation of my mind for way too long. You know, and I'll <laughs> yeah. talk to some people about them, but like it's it these aren't i really don't have a lot of people that i that i i talk with about this kind of stuff and where can i find these people like i i guess in the flesh versus like where can i find these people yeah. uh, you know i've got a small community of guys that i've begun to i've begun to like fellowship with through skate church that i can approach some of the stuff with um but i don't have a lot of like other other people who consider themselves Christians that I connect with, you know, yeah. Um, besides on, on the internet. <laughs> yeah. So it's pretty wild. Yeah. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad you can talk with me about it, man. Yeah. I'm in the same boat. I'm, with, I'm I mean, with, with talking about this stuff, it's, it's a, I feel like there's a lot of people that are kind of in the, in the same situation and probably need to talk about these things and think the same thoughts and they're, I don't know. Yeah. Trying to figure it all out as well. But oh man, and I constantly think I'm crazy. So <laughs> it's, it's that lunar knowledge, man. Lunar yeah. tick. There you go. Lunar tick. I think that's what that means, right? I think that's where they came from. Yeah. Yeah. Man, um, I Just can't accept it. You're about to go to India. Yeah, for I think uh 10, 10 days. I don't know. I think, though, I, I mean, it'd be kind of cool. I don't know how the internet will be there, but it'd be kind of cool if I could get it, like, hop in a conversation while I'm over there or something. But yeah, it would know. be. It would yeah. be a different time. It'll probably be, like, light out or... Yeah, I think it'd be, like, early morning or something. Yeah. I, I want to say they're, like, eight hours ahead, so it's probably, like, 7 a.m. there right now or something. I don't know. Yeah. But, you have yeah. a trampoline back behind you? Do I have what? trampoline back there no this is like a, a like hammock swing thing and i don't use it too often sometimes i use it but uh yeah this is like the porch area so i moved back in with my parents and i'm kind of in their the upstairs area so this is kind of like a porch that's high up in the um like second story porch it's super nice though as i can I haven't done it too much this year, but last year, like I said, a lot. I was sleeping out on the porch, just looking at the stars and the moon and everything. And then, uh, yeah, yeah. And then um, there's a raccoon I made friends with, but um, that was one because when I first moved in, I had a room downstairs and I sleep out on the porch down there. And then he tried stealing my metal coffee mug one night. I woke up and he was like running off with it. Then after that, I kind of made friends with them slowly over time. But then um, I don't see him up on this porch, though. But that's okay. <laughs> Gotta love those raccoons, man. Absolutely. They're fun. They're fun. Oh, they are. Yeah. They get, they get in. They've had, I've had to fortify that chicken coop, though, man. Oh, yeah. They're, I'm sure they're not good for chickens. They're, they're, it's weird. They're like, when you encounter them, they don't ever seem like mean. 
yeah like even even the cat like we had a cat around our house and like the raccoons nicer than the cat was like the cat would scratch at the raccoons and they'd just be like what the heck yeah what's going, what's wrong with you i just want to get out of this food too <laughs> yeah. And I like my I, my car window. I just fixed it this last weekend. Like it fell off the track. Well, the track broke. It didn't. I had to order a new part. So for like all week long, the raccoons were getting in my car, and like I had a I had a pack of pop tarts in there, and I like went out to go to go leave in the morning. There's like trash like all over my car, crumbs everywhere. I was kidding, me, kidding me. Do you, I get do you, do you eat uh, the frosted pop tarts or do you get unfrosted? Frosted, of course, man. What, what do you mean? <laughs> of course, frosted. <laughs> what do you? I, what do you ask? I, I grew up just. I I've never liked the frosted pop tarts. I just get the unfrosted strawberry. I toast it. I put butter on it. Then it's what? Then it's a pastry. It's not a pop tart anymore. <laughs> what do you? It's a toaster strudel. <laughs> purple ones with the blue lines that squiggle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm two. <laughs> like I'm five years old, man. Yeah, those are the best ones. <laughs> Yeah, it's just this like crusted sugar on the outside. <laughs> and I what I need to find is is more. Uh, I gotta find like your, because I, I I feel like I know just very little about uh, your story too. I'm sure that you've got some videos that are. If I just went through all your content, all I of my content, know, I just know your life story. I can give you a brief rundown. Um, so there's there's a lot that goes into it. So basically, um. Mm, yeah, I don't know how brief of a rundown I could give you. Don't have um, diabetes, so right? I grew up. I grew up in the church. I grew up in Word of Faith circles. Usually, my uh, my parents were children's pastors. Then, um, out of high school, I basically, I, don't, I mean, I don't remember. I was never like a great kid. I was always kind of rebellious, whatever. And then, um, when I got in college, this is when I started like drinking, smoking. I never got really heavy, too heavy into drugs or anything. And then I just um. It wasn't really even the drinking or the smoking. It was just like I slowly just began this like decline of just cynicism and uh, yeah. despising humanity in general and being just bitter at people. And then got to the point where like I like people individually, like different people in my lives. I'd be like, oh, they're a friend. But like overall, it's like humanity. I was like, people are just rotten. And I just got very and that was when it got really rough. And then um, so I the worst the worst part spiritually in my life was like my neighbor ended up stealing one of my dad's tools and then i just like took that as an excuse to hate this guy and i just remember thinking so this was like the worst part of like probably the darkest part spiritually in my life i remember thinking like i i would i went to my mom and i told her i was like i i want him to die only if i know he's going to hell I was like, I don't want him to die if there's a chance I'll get to heaven because like, I don't want to see him there. Like, I hate this man that much. And like, and I was like, and I know that's not right. And I remember telling her that. I was like, I know I have to forgive him. I know I can't live with that. And so that was tough because I remember like, literally I would look at him and see him and like, it felt like, like physical. It felt like something was inside of me, like wanting, like I'd physically want to vomit or something like something. I don't know how to describe it. Some like, yeah. black technically mass was like trying to take hold and and i and it felt like hindsight looking back it felt like i walked up to the edge of a cliff and it was like i can either choose to forgive him or just step over and that's it for me and uh and i remember it just being hard like having to like little by little just i'd see him and i'd be like tell myself no i forgive him even though i didn't really and i just had to kind of like baby step my way through it or something um wow. and now like I don't know what happened to the guy, but like, I mean, he's probably, it's this weird thing where like, I think because I was so angry at him, like I've, I got to experience forgiveness and like, I personally got to experience it in such a great way that I, I, like I would go to hell for the guy now. And I don't even know, like he could be probably murdering somebody and I'd be like, no, I'd still go to hell. Or like, I don't know. It's just a weird level of love that like uh, yeah. worked its way through that. Yeah. And so that, happened kind of I think simultaneously of I had this whenever I first started college I moved out and this kind of get into all other weird theories too but I moved out of my parents house and then I ended up developing this like pain where it would start here 
and it would just like spread slowly spread and like take over basically my whole right side of my face and um like to where sometimes the pain would be ex so excruciating like it would affect my vision i could turn off the light and like this i wouldn't adjust to the darkness or anything it's the worst pain i've ever dealt with in my life i had for nine years i went to doctors they could never figure out what was wrong with me i just thought i was trying to get pain meds um and then uh, eventually some guy said it was some sort of nerve tr trigger something neuralgia i can't remember it and then uh yeah I, some weird name um then i basically it just got to the point where like i i thought i was gonna have to kill myself because it would just it would come seasonally and then it would like keep me up all night long and so like it would stay for a month then it would leave and then now looking back like i don't know how else to describe it other than it was just a spirit um yeah i, I really don't know how else to describe it because it's just weird the way it happened the way it would come and go it would keep me up all night and at the end of the month, I'd be almost losing my mind for lack of sleep. And I remember telling my mom, like, if this is, this uh, can't, like, if, if there's no cure for this, then I'm gonna have to kill myself because I just can't, I can't do this every day for the rest of my life. And then um, I basically gave me this book of, about healing um, by Kenneth Hagen. Um, and then I started reading that that kind of brought me back towards God. Uh, then after I finished that, I started reading the scripture and then um, through a series of events, God healed me of that. And I haven't had the pain since then. And then also warts, I had warts like starting to cover my body. It was gross. I couldn't shave. I would shave and it would like nick one, it would spread. And yeah, and then God healed me of that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually have pictures of that. Like I can share, I can share that if you want. Um, yeah, because it was like I—I I mean, I, it was kind of like leprosy or something. Like I had, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it was, but play. yeah, basically. But they would like I would freeze them on my neck, um, and I'd like I remember like I'd have like these black spots because I'd buy that freezing stuff. But then like if I would shave, I'd nick them, and uh, and then it would bleed, and then it would just spread, and I'd just get more and more, and it just kept getting worse and worse and worse, and then I, uh believe was believing god for my healing in that too and that i mean i can go more into detail about all that because it's like a process it wasn't like none of these healings were instant and none of them were like yeah like like you want them to be like it was definitely a test of like trial and faith and like really uh yeah i don't even know i, hey, I mean I, but yeah that's fascinating to me and that is i mean that brings it into a whole nother subject that i don't think we'd be probably be able to yeah still, not now <laughs> but that because like i think there's a conceptual failure of imagination on like my my part uh in my own mind because my understanding is that you know these healings had to occur you know immediately and stuff like that but like yeah I, god is in the process of healing healing me in like it's like this slow thing in, but it's yeah. like also this test, you know, and I fail all the time and it doesn't yeah. mean that the warts just show back up or whatever, you know, yeah. My yeah. Warts, even though yeah. I don't have warts, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. 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 And it's not quite like, I remember when I was believing for the warts, I just kept like thinking like I'd wake up one morning and they'd be laying on the pillow or something beside me. And I'd be like, oh, I'm clean. <laughs> You know, but it like it didn't happen like that. Like basically, um, they would like they started itching like after a while. Cause I just kept believing, and I remember like I would I had a list of scriptures, probably a hundred different ver Bible verses I would recite every day, like that were based around healing and stuff. And like, and then finally, what like, like I guess I can go in a little bit. So the best like, the, I don't I don't really know how to describe it. Like I just remember. It was this one verse in Romans and it says, what can I say to these things if God is for me, who can be against me? And that was one of the verses I would recite every day. And I remember looking in the mirror while I was out working and I stopped in the bathroom and I just like looking in the mirror, I was washing my hands and I just remember seeing them all over my neck. And I said that verse and it was just like this weird, like where it just, it's like a, it's like a, like something flipped, a light switched or something. I don't know. And it was just like, and I was like, is it, uh, and I just remember looking at the words and saying that verse, like, what can I say to these things? If God is for me, who can be against me? And it was just like, 
and I think I, I don't even like they didn't disappear after that. It was just like like something flipped in my mind, like yeah. mentally. And I was like, OK, this is no big deal anymore. Like whatever. Um, that felt like a turning point. And then after that, they started itching, which they hadn't really done before. And I remember like thinking, like, I can't scratch these because they'll spread. Like, I can't freaking do it. They'll spread. And then finally, I was like, I can't take whatever. I just need to, like, believe God. Like, I'm not believing God if I'm just going to, like, sit here in fear of, like, well, just spread more or whatever. So finally, I was like, whatever, I'll just let it be and just scratch them if they itch. And then they ended up scabbing up and just, like, did, like you know, went away with the scabs, um, which didn't happen before. They used they would always leave scars before. But uh, let me see. Where do I share the screen really quick, though? I can uh, – I forgot how to do that. You going to show everyone? Yeah, you can show. Yeah, I don't mind. Uh, how do I share screen? I don't even remember where this is. There it is right there, share screen. Uh, so this was the picture I had of them. And that's like – and now they're gone. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah, so on the left, that was like when I would shave, and then you can see that one's bloody, and then it would – spread and this was like after they started to scab up a little bit and some of them kind of had gone away and then there's where like there's you can only see a few left there but like they're down like there on my neck too i mean it's just and there wasn't just my neck too like i had some on like my chest even at one point and yeah most of them were on my neck though but it is gross <laughs> that is wild yeah right. yeah cool. yeah Cool. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. So that's kind of my story. So then I, yeah, basically just been, I don't really share that stuff because it just seems very, um, it's like, it's impactful and it's impactful to me, but I guess like on the scale of things, it's just very, like the physical healings feels, I guess, I don't know how to describe it. It feels small. Like I said, the dark place I was at with just being consumed in bitterness is like what's, absolutely terrifying and i'm like yeah i don't know yeah i i I hear what you're saying there because it's like you know you yeah and you're talking about the difference between solar light and moonlight even in that even in that very thought Yeah. yeah yeah because you're talking about an inner reality versus an outer reality you know and like yeah yeah and all that stuff i went through like all the pain the warts everything feels like a mercy to me now like that verse in where it says yeah. like he, paul says give him up to satan uh for the destruction of his flesh that his spirit might be saved like that's what it felt like to me like i was just in like this weird place of torment till i finally came to my senses and i was like yeah yeah that my spirit might be saved but yeah i don't always i don't know i always i feel weird when i talk about myself yeah but that term like you know how you know how they say like sin leads to death yeah it's just like in in there i just this might be a weird thing to say but i'll just say it because i feel like our physical bodies just do deteriorate you know like and and yeah in a, <laughs> and i and i don't know how to say, you know what i'm saying but it's like i think I think it happens and it's like you move into obedience. I don't even, this might just be uh, not exactly what I even expected to say, but you move into like obedience, like, and you can only obey what you hear, you, you know, the, the convict, whatever, 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 yeah. it is, you know, and, and, and it's like, man, when that, when you do it, it, there is this healing that occurs and it is, I mean, even with this whole, like not that far down the road, like, like movement into like, I am officially like, like I'm not on antidepressants anymore. I don't, I don't have to consume cannabis on them. Yeah. Like what? I didn't even know that that was possible. I didn't yeah. even know that I could even experience joy in life without having mm-hmm. those things or, you know, even nicotine. Like, I mean, I was addicted to nicotine for uh, 
12, 13 years of my life. And so, and then it was like, I prayed and trusted and asked because I just did not want to be a dad that was like constantly blowing smoke in my son's face. And yeah, come to find out I wasn't the only one praying about these things. You know, people were praying for oh, yeah. me. Yeah, it always happens that way, I guess. But, yeah. but it was just like, there is deliverance in some of these things and and it yeah but it's like i <laughs> yeah it's wild dude when i start thinking about it but it's like i it's like how come i can't see that like i can't see it in the fullness of its glory or like in its in its in its power and in its yeah what do you, what do you mean by that how like, I'm, how can like i'm see i always will rationalize it i'll always use okay. my my brain to sort of like well, you know, oh. I took a lot of effort and fortitude in, in and of myself, you mm-hmm. know, to quit smoking or, you know, like, you know, I've done a lot of work on myself over the last yeah. Yeah, yeah. 10 years to be able to like, to be able to finally be at a spot where I don't need to have a crutch, like yeah, constantly uh, uh, consuming cannabis or or using that as a crutch and or using antidepressants as a crutch yeah like uh, it's 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 all on i've done the work you know yeah yeah. but in reality i it has taken a ton of just like also leaps of faith like yeah that that would be even possible but at the same time i you know it's easy for me to put all the glory back on myself rather than giving glory to god and yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and yeah i know what you mean but, or even even with like miracles too it's like or, or anything it's like you uh healings or whatever you have this we have this tendency to rationalize it or something like even with the words thing like uh i remember i told this uh, lady about it one time and she her immediate response and not to slight her at all, because it's just like, it's just what we naturally do as humans. She said like, well, it's probably just some, um, something in your body, like just switched and started fighting it off or something. And I'm like, that doesn't make it any less miraculous. Like the moment yeah. I, like how convenient as soon as I start praying for it, that happens. But I'm like, yeah, that's probably actually what happened. But like your mind wants to do that. Or like even weird, weird stuff. Like I remember being out one time, I was just in the woods and there's no, like I did discover an explanation for it but i just remember like smelling like a car's brakes had burned up all of a sudden and i like my mind i just remember i don't know why i remember it i think i just remember it because my mind was thinking oh like i remember it was way up on this hill and way down in the valley was like where my dad was going to be or something and it was like oh well his brakes are probably burned up and it just blew up the hill and i'm like hey down there's nothing wrong with this car at all it's like but immediately my mind starts trying to rationalize this weird smell i'm getting it's like it's just this reaction where like like you want to you want to just ignore the the glory like you're talking about or or god's hand in things or the miraculous and things or the weird yeah. the weird stuff it's like you just try to yeah i don't know cover it up or something but yeah yeah your story man that's great that's 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 cool that you off the antidepressants and everything and just yeah yeah i mean uh, yeah. who knows you know it's like i'll hold out you know like it, like i said they were helpful at a time i think it was I, mean, I think i needed them at one point in my life and i guess i just would never like discourage somebody from i would never want my story to like i hope it would be encouraging for somebody to both uh i don't even know how to say it like to hey this doesn't have to be a permanent situation in your life like um yeah so at the same time like if you know it also uh it can be very helpful to stabilize <laughs> someone yeah. who is literally you know at the edge of their at the edge of their uh, psychological stability i suppose yeah, it seems like there's, yeah, the, yeah, for sure. I think that's a sad part to me too. Is the the part you mentioned where it's like people get stuck in it for life, like yeah. like what what what's helpful at first, like 
clamps down on them and then it's like oh, i have to have this to to function mm. yeah yeah man but, yeah anyways i'm sorry man it's like 11 30 and i'm keeping you super late but uh, yeah. that is okay and um, we keep going and then we didn't even right. like get really get at our topic too much well i mean we did but i don't know that we we did and yeah, and yeah. who knows maybe some people will give us some insight if uh yeah. if, if we if we post this which i'm fine with i'm, um, I'm cool with it too if, if you're fine with it so um and then what was i gonna say i don't have any warp pictures to share <laughs> um, so you can share a screen share something yeah. sure. <laughs> i don't have warp pictures well they're not they're not they're, they're kind of gross yeah it's kind of annoying too because i like i realized i didn't actually get my face in it like i took, took pictures of the warts and i'm like of course like i should have actually got my face but i actually have scars though like if it you know if anyone wants to see my scars yeah, from my other warts so like oh well, if somebody if somebody yeah. wants to shed some solar light on it yeah yeah come here feel my scars feel my <laughs> yeah no no <laughs> Yeah, it's not it's not that big of a deal it's like i said with anything yeah i think you can always kind of rationalize away or say like yeah, yeah. whatever he's the whole lazarus thing send send him back from the dead and we'll believe him and they didn't care they didn't care takes 23 days to break a habit it does i don't know sure i heard that sounds song. legit so i'm gonna break the habit of uh rationalizing all the time <laughs> all right <laughs> All right, how do we how do you even begin to do that? Man, sounds I don't like know. a good plan. I need yeah. to do it as well. I'm gonna try it, see what happens. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, they thanks for talking. Luke. Yeah, it was it was great. I really appreciate your time. And, yeah, you uh, too. Well, we'll let's do this again soon. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Have a good night. You too. Bye. See. You.